Writing content has never been exactly a simple nor a straightforward task. It involves a whole lot of different steps on the way to reaching your goal. Steps like coming up with an idea in the first place, doing your research, then using what you've researched to actually write the text, coming up with a structure, then adding maybe some images or media or other stuff into the mix, and then actually doing the writing, then reading it, realizing that it's all wrong, and rewriting the whole thing, and the steps go on and on and on. Of course, AI has been with us for a little while now and has been immensely helping us with the process of tasks like this one. However, today we'll be looking at a tool which has been built specifically for writing articles and it does a pretty decent job of it. The tool is called Perplexity Pages and it's a subset of the whole Perplexity package. In some countries it's a free feature, in others like where I'm in right now, which is the UK, it's actually part of the pro package which is $20 a month. So by the end of this video I hope we'll be able to decide together if it was worth the money. Since I've already paid for the pro package I'll show you what's inside the box. So it comes with four main features which is unlimited pro searches which if you're using the free version you only get five of them. Then you have advanced AI models, so you'll get models like the GPT-4.0 model from OpenAI and you'll get Cloud 3.5 Sonnet from Anthropic, which is probably the best one out there right now, and a couple of other ones, we'll go through them in just a little bit. Then we have file uploads, which means that you can upload your documents, your PDFs, your images, to perplexity while creating your research. Then we have access to image generation, which gives us access to tools like DALI 3 or Stable Diffusion Excel to generate our images. And then last but not least, we have pages, which will be the main topic of our today's video. However, before we jump into that, let me just show you what the standard threads feature of perplexity looks like now since we're a pro user. So let's create a thread and the UI looks exactly the same as when we were a free user. So I'm going to ask it to write me an article about the history of ciabatta. I don't know about yourselves, but I've only found out two months ago that ciabatta, the Italian bread, has been around for a very short time actually. I thought it was something that's been created in, I don't know, like the 5th century or 2000 years ago, something like that. However, ciabatta has only been invented in 1982, which is ridiculous to me. I have friends who are older than that. So I have friends who are older than Ciabatta. But anyways, back to perplexity. So in the meantime, it's written us an article, of course using the pro search feature, and it's given us the sources, it's given us some images, and as we continue, we can ask it some follow-up questions. That is exactly what we had in the free version. However, notice that in the bottom right corner, you'll also see a Claude 3.5 sonnet in a little pill at the bottom. That means that obviously it's using this model and we can also control which model we'll be using for our text and image generation. So what we'll do next is we'll jump into the settings of our perplexity account by clicking on the cogwheel in the bottom left corner of the page and you'll see that you have a couple of things that you can customize and one of them is the AI model that your perplexity package is using. So we have Claude 3.5 Sonnet Sonar Large 32K, GPT-4.0 and Claude 3 Opus to choose from. And then if we move over to the image generation tab, we also have Playground version 2.5, DALI 3 and Stable Diffusion Excel to choose from. All right, great. Since we have all this out the way, we're going to move over to the main key element of our little video today. So pages, I'll remind you is what we're talking about. If you hover your mouse over the left hand side of the UI of Perplexity, you'll see a little library button which you'll hover over and then you'll see a little plus button show up from nowhere and once you click on that you'll see threads, page and collection options showing up. Now don't ask me why it's so hidden away because it actually took me a while to figure this out. So click on the page button and you'll see a very empty page looking thing in the middle of your screen. And the first thing that you'll see is what's your page about, which we'll fill in in just a little second. But before we do that, you'll see that we have a little toggle just below, which gives us the option to choose our audience. Now, there's two options for now, which is beginners and experts. And obviously the beginners is for somebody who's not really in the topic of our article and experts is for somebody who really is and has a vast amount of knowledge, so we don't need to build simple intros. Anyways, we're gonna make our article built for beginners and the topic will be what is SEO. And as soon as we click the enter button, Perplexity gets right to work. And it's already changed the title of my article. It's now SEO Basics Explained. It's come up with a background image on the top of my little article. 
and it's starting to write out all the different sections and filling it in with text. So we have the evolution of SEO, the role of AI in modern SEO, and the SEO for social media platforms. Fantastic! So we have the basis of our article already in place, and we're already in editing mode because, well, this is what really Pages is about. You write an article, or Perplexity writes your article, and then you come in and you start editing every single bit that you want to customize. So the first thing I really don't like about this article is the image on top. I think it's horrible. The colors are pretty grim. So I'll click on the change button on the top right corner of my image and I'll see a number of different images that I can select from which are pulled from the internet. But I'll click on the generate image button and I'll have it generate an illustration based on the topic of my article. Give it a couple of seconds and it generates an image of a mountain with a bunch of cogwheels and God knows what on it. Which is not ideal, but at least you get to move it up and down. All right, I'm joking. You can actually modify this image to your needs. So we'll click on the change button again. This time, instead of choosing the style of our Im image, like painting, illustration, diagram, or photograph, we're gonna click on the little wrench icon next to the choose a style. And this gives us a box which we can fill in with information about what we want to generate. So we got the style and you got the subject. I'll make the style as photorealistic and the subject, which is the description of the image, will be generate an image of a person working on their laptop. And we get an image of a lady which is working on her laptop. The aspect ratio is not ideal for our case because it doesn't exactly fit the laptop and the lady at the same time. But you can of course work this out with perplexity by customizing your prompt and making sure that the aspect ratio is, I don't know, four, four to three or something like that. All right, so now we have the background image of our article. We also have the title which has been modified for us and I think it's quite, quite all right. We could of course modify it if we wanted to. So it's SEO basics explained and now we can add some images to our sections in the article. So let's have a look at the evolution of SEO, add media and it gives us a little timeline of how SEO has progressed over time which I think is actually appropriate so I'm going to leave it to it. But of course, if I wanted to, I could go through the same process I did for the landing image that we worked on a second ago. Now let's do a little bit of rewriting. So I'm going to look at my the role of AI in modern SEO title of a section and I'll customize it to just AI in modern SEO, which I think is a bit more concise and easier to read. Now I'm going to edit one of my sections. So I'll click on the edit button and I can choose between concise or detailed and this section was actually quite short so maybe a detailed option would be a better match for us so I'm gonna choose that and then I can choose how I portray my data so it can either be just text or media or text and media so I'll select text and media and then I can also add a paragraph or a table or a list so for now I'm just gonna stick to text and media and make sure that my text is detailed instead of concise and see what happens. All right, the section is a lot longer this time, but it's missing the image, which I think is a bug in perplexity as I've been trying this feature for a while and it never works. So you'll need to add the image manually, which we'll do in a second. Let's just have a look at a couple of the other options that we have. Here we have a section about SEO for social media platforms. And as I start reading through this section, I see that there's mention of a number of different social medias like Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, etc. So I think a table would actually work for this one. So I'm gonna try and rewrite this piece of the article and I'm gonna ask it to add a table in. And it's done a great job. You have the YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn and it's adding a bit of best practices for each of those platforms. Great. Then if you want to extend your article, you can of course add extra sections. So this is what we have at the bottom of our page and you can add your custom new section or you can choose one of the ones that are suggested to you by perplexity. So I'm going to be a bit lazy. I'm going to just select one of the suggested options, which will be the rise of local SEO. And we get a little section into our article. As you start scrolling and hovering your mouse over the article, you'll see that you can add sections also within the text. So we'll do that. Predictive analytics and SEO. I'll edit it just to make it a list so I can show you what it looks like. And now we have this little list based 
section. So now let's assume that the article is complete. Of course it's not because it's a bit of a mess because I've been showing you all these different features of perplexity. But for the purpose of this exercise, let's assume it's perfect. So the next thing to do would be to publish it. So we're gonna go to the top right corner of our perplexity page and we're gonna click on publish. And what we can do is select one of the few very limited options that we have. So we have Twitter, WhatsApp, Facebook, which is where you can share your built article to, or you can just copy the link. And I'm gonna click on copy the link and I'll open an incognito tab in my browser just to make sure that I'm not logged in to Perplexity. And if I paste the link in, you'll see that my article opens up to anybody else who might want to read it. So there you go, you got your article built by Perplexity and yourself, of course, give yourself some credit. And you got your imagery, you got the different sections and of course, if you want to customize it, you might want to experiment with all the other models, all the other image generators. And the key outcome here is that you don't really need to spend hours or days on writing an article. It can take just a couple of minutes and that's fine. And one thing to point out here is that Perplexity Pages is a relatively fresh feature in the Perplexity package. So it might have a UI UX bug here and there, like the fact that when we try to regenerate a section with images and text, it just gave us text. So if what you do for a living is writing content for platforms like Twitter or LinkedIn or Threads these days or Medium, I think this is a very solid tool. Of course, I don't encourage you to just copy paste the whole thing and be done with it. I would probably modify the text and use this as a bit of an inspiration, but I think this will improve your speed dramatically over the standard way of doing things. This is Perplexity Pages for you. Give it a try and tell me what you think, and I will see you in the very next video. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.